so here <coughs> infrastructure supports communities without access to an all season road people are cut off from crucial services and markets access to an all season road within 2 km most recent value from 2009 to 16 so people with access here percentage of rural population people without access in millions you know is is given over here so you know like a different countries you know bangladesh kenya rwanda nepal uganda tanzania ethiopia mozambique lesotho and zambia okay so this is also known as rural access index rai uh, yeah so from 0 to 100% in bangladesh if you see this place for you know, like this rural connectivity is uh, is very high compared to you know like the rest of the you know others okay and this is somewhere it looks like you know close to like you know above 85 you know 90 87 you know 86 is or something like that 86 87 right here we have in kenya i think little above above you know like a 50 and then nepal also and uganda also in this range and then there is another you know like a sudden drop if you see there is a huge drop here and another huge drop here okay tanzania ethiopia mozambique lesotho zambia you know under 25 you know And these are above, you know, right above, you know, like a fifty, I think, in this range, and this one is the only one having, you know, at, at this range. Okay. <clears throat> well, data was only available for the ten countries. For rest, I think you can, uh, you know, search the World Bank's, you know, like uh, this report. Okay. Maybe for more additional data. Yeah, people without access, if you see, in the Ethiopia, has the highest, you know, above sixty. You know, it looks like it's a twenty, uh, you know, like this thing. then maybe 5 you know four more so 64 you know like a million you know like people they have no access to road in rural you know like a uh, uh, areas right rural access index you know this is talking about you know within 2 kilometers you know like that region so all season road you know so this country has the <coughs> very serious condition you know almost two third of the population is deprived of you know like this thing in the rural areas right and uh, then after that we have tanzania then after that we have uganda then bangladesh and then uh, mozambique and then nepal rwanda and lastly lesotho lesotho only has i think uh, this is 10 this is 5 so perhaps 2 you know it looks like 2 2 million people only have you know like no access to an all weather road okay so this is the data with this data you can understand uh, you know like which country stands where in terms of you know people with access in percentage and without access in numbers okay so this is the percentage this thing and this is you know like in millions so percentage wise if you see this uh, you know like uh, ethiopia you know this is you know only less than uh, you know like a 25 i think uh, here around 20 uh, you know like around 20 okay and uh, yeah but number wise volume wise this is huge yeah and similarly we have you know like other you know like a data sets also you can see in the slide manufacturing and other industry is a large source of employment but many least developing developed countries have a small manufacturing sector GDP per capita by sector value added 2000 to 16 constant 2000 you know like year 2010 US dollar each country scaled in uh, independently okay so here you know this shows the this shows you know like this level you know GDP per capita you know these numbers you see here at the top okay as per 2016 and uh, you know like this shaded area it talks about each sector's value added contribution to gdp per capita 2000 to 2016 when available and uh, yeah overall worlds if you see this is the range from 2000 to 2016 this has reached to 10488 you know us dollars you know and uh, <clears throat> then bangladesh benin bhutan burkina faso burundi you know we can see these numbers 1030 837 here we have only 218 okay then cambodia central african republic chad congo ethiopia right gambia madagascar malawi 
Then Rwanda, Nepal is at 685. Solomon Island 1479. Then uh, Uganda 662, Tuvalu 3403, 300, like 3403. So it looks like among all of this, you know, Tuvalu has the highest and uh, Vanuatu has the second highest, right? And the least one I see is is it Burundi yeah it looks like Burundi has the least one at 218 only and uh, different sectors you know like you can see agriculture is by dark gray services by lighter gray and pink other industries you know and this magenta is for manufacturing and total yeah so that is the you know like bifurcation Medium and high tech industry allows for greater diversification and offers better opportunities for skills development and innovation. Medium and high tech industry percent is manufacturing value added. So 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 and above. Okay. So here, yeah, medium and high tech industry include manufacturing chemical machinery, motor vehicles. So this is the you know like a data from uh, Unido. You can see uh, including India, China, Japan, Indonesia, etc. and yeah, Brazil, Mexico, US, Canada and most of Europe except few you know are uh, in above 30 and over in percentage right and then Russia, Pakistan you know and uh, Australia, New Zealand also they are under this range 15 to 30 and this light pink you know uh, chile and you know like some central american countries and many of the you know like a uh, you know african countries you know mongolia you know afghanistan you know they are under this even myanmar bangladesh nepal also there is no data for bhutan and many other countries those are in gray right it shows you know the status Patents are designed to encourage innovation by providing incentives for research and development. So, you know, patents are one of the indicators you can call of new research and development, like new R&D. So, how much it is happening, you know, on how many patents, you know, patents are actually, uh, you know, those, uh, like when you discover, you know, something, a new mechanism, a new device or you know, like something, okay, you go and register it or maybe a new technology, right? So that, you know, there are, you know, like the benefits of, you know, like a patenting. That first of all, you know, everybody gets to know that such technology or you know, such, you know, like a mechanism, such, you know, like a technique is now existing. It works in so and so manner and other people also can, you know, take benefit out of that. Okay. And uh, secondly, it registers, you know, like uh, in your name, you know, if you are the innovator, if you are the, you know, like a, uh, a technologist, you know, like a, a person or scientist behind this, okay, in your name. So all of the, you know, like a future royalties and things, if, if, if they might occur, you know, they may you know, like a come to you also. Right. So, patenting has a lot of benefits and in a way, it is an indicator of, uh, you know, like a growth and development of new tech. You know. So, <clears throat> how much of that is happening? Okay. That also you can see over the years, you know, like how different countries are, uh, you know, like a performing. So, Korea's, if you see, they have registered a tremendous, you know, like, a, you know, like a change. Okay. So, almost close to at zero, you know, and uh, by the year 2016, you know, they were at the top, you know, above 300, you know, like a patent applications, you know, per 1 lakh people. So, this is a percentage, not uh, the absolute number of, you know, like a patents, okay. This is just a, a percentage representation per 1 lakh people. In Japan, it used to be like, you know, like a nicer in the older times to 1960, I think above everyone. And gradually it rose also, but in the uh, in the later years, I think after year 2000 or so, it is on uh, decline. Uh, United States, you know, is uh, rising. Uh, sudden, you know, like a slight, you know, like a dip over here, but now it is rising. Well, China, if you see, almost close to zero, you know, like uh, and uh, from here, 1980s and onwards, it has started and a very steep exponential, you know, like a curve you can see for China, Germany. 
also has kind of like a stabilized Singapore is also increasing right so you can see the performance of different countries over here so this is the source from WIPO yeah and uh, yeah total millions uh, you can see this China has surpassed you know like everyone with the huge you know like a gap between you know this to the you know next second so 1.25 millions you know of uh, uh, patents right over you know like these years so this is the data you know from year 2016 and that is the status okay United States you know has uh, here 0.25 so a little above 0.25 maybe 0.30 or so or 0.28 you know Japan's close to 0.25 Korea is with percentage wise it was the highest but absolute number wise it is you know like uh, in the other side you know maybe at 0.18 or something million okay and Germany and Singapore okay so yeah this is the status you know like a volume wise and percentage wise you can see like how many people you know per you know like x number of people of the society are going for patenting and such activities and the total number yeah so we are talking about you know like growth of infrastructure industry and all of that and uh, you may be aware of you know like this iconic you know like a picture you know this building on the right side you know this is a very famous uh, you know like a landmark now this is you know like situated in Dubai and you may be wondering what you know like this place is okay this is also not Mars or any other place it you know as it it looks like you know very barren and you know like just you know few standalone buildings the rest is still very very raw nature right but this is also the same, uh, you know, like a place of, you know, like a Dubai, okay, from the year 1991, okay. So, from 1991 to 2017, you know, maybe less than, you know, like a span of around uh, like 30 years, you know, close to 25 years, you know, 26, 27 years, you know, like a period, you see this, you know, like a rate at which, you know, like this has grown, okay. So, this is really exponential in terms of, uh, you know, like infrastructure development facilities and all of that. Okay, tremendous growth recorded, you know, at this place. So this is the rate at which you know, like things are, uh, you know, like changing in multiple, you know, like locations across the world. Well, it is good that uh, you know infrastructure, a robust infrastructure is coming up, but there are you know like a certain uh, you know downsides also of you know like a change which is happening at such a rate. This is 1970. You know, you see how places are changing, you know, so rapidly. You see this mind boggling change. Yeah. New York, you see these uh, WTC, World Trade Centers, and Twin Towers over here in the background. And you see largely, you know, like any generic. You know, like a town from 118, 176, you know, to now, you know, this is one of the, you know, like a biggest metropolis, you know, on the planet, right? With the huge infrastructure, huge facilities, and you know, everything available, right, at your disposal. So, so much of change has come in the, in the last, you know, like a few decades and last, you know, like a century. Okay, these pictures are, uh, you know, like a visual, you know, like a proof. Of that change yeah so on one side I wanted to discuss you know like the impact of roads so in all of these uh, you know like a places if you see irrespective of you know which country they belong to and all of that you know the roads are very very integral in this picture also you see this you know like a major you know like a straight arterial road you know cutting in the middle okay and similarly you can see you know like these uh, metro routes or highways you know like other you know like a you know like routes and roads you know in these pictures also you can see there is you know like a road you know cutting from this edge you know internal roads on this side right this you know like a road is going in along this beach and uh, similarly you see you know like this you know like a bridge over here in the foreground then you know like this road here and there are multiple actually bridges you know on the you know landscape of uh, New York you see another one you know like a bridge over here also in this picture so impact of roads 
because wherever there is a road you know there is a full chance and potential that you can easily and conveniently reach right so roads are the you know like the biggest facilitators for you know like the growth and development of economy right bringing in facilities of all sorts you know making a place actually habitable and all of those things right so what are the impacts you know like caused by road so maybe you can see a few biodiversity it impacts on directly biodiversity's richness animal abundance behavioral changes you know since these they are you know, like a natural area you know like a, you know animals you know they are not accustomed to you know like a roads and infrastructure and you know, these things you know required by humans right so they are the ones you know who who feel you know like a, this uh, you know like alienation and uh, you know like a change uh, and, and and it brings you know like a lot of change in their behavioral you know like aspects and you know like a, a habitat uh, you know like a aspects and many others right so yeah <clears throat> that thing and then invasive species since you know transportation is now facilitated you know so there is a full chance you know that uh, seeds and all you know, other stuff are going to get scattered you know like uh, uh unknowingly you know even sometimes knowingly sometimes mostly unknowingly you know to far away places where they are not supposed to go right there is you know like a nature's you know like a means and mechanisms of spreading uh, you know like a seeds and uh, you know like a plants to different you know places right but this you know very sudden very steep very high you know like a manual like a human uh, you know like a caused you know like a uh, spread of uh, you know like a species from one place to another you know is also leading you know like a havoc for example you may be aware of you know when uh, in the earlier you know decades you know just after independence and india used to import you know like a fruit grains from you know like different countries okay and in some shipments you know from uh, us actually of the wheat you know these uh, uh, you know uh, many of you know like these uh, gajar ghas what we call it in uh, you know, like you know in hindi right so that uh, actually plant you know and its seeds actually you know like a came you know through that you know those shipments and they got scattered you know across the india and now it this has become such a you know like a menace and uh, you know like an invasive species you know which is you know dominating on the local species i think uh, right and uh, uh, is not going to get you know like away plus the hazard is ki it's it's not good for the you know like a human uh, you know like habitation also it causes you know, skin irritation you know, and 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 uh, you know like a asthmatic you know like a you know like a situations you know like breathing related issues and things like that right and unknowingly actually people because it it comes with you know like a teeny tiny small you know like a shiny flowers you know at, at the top of it right and uh, yeah it is like that you know like small teeny tiny you know, like a flowers okay and it's such a like you know like a bad you know like impact now that a uh, health wise and spread wise and even to the other you know like a local you know plants which are there on this place right so this is one of the you know like a uh, you know suitable examples why one should you know like a prevent you know like a travel of invasive species then of course the biggest you know like a problem noise pollution air pollution and, and uh, disturbances and all sorts of you know like a pollutions and things deforestation because uh, you know like a, there is a need and uh, humans you know like they know best how to you know like exploit nature and uh, exhaust it of its resources so all of those things yeah resource extraction hunting you know and overall land use changes and fragmentation okay so if you see if this used to be a forest and now there is a road you know passing in between so now this forest is going to get split into two right causing you know disturbances you know for you know like these animals to cross over because you know their habitat you know is is this whole uh, you know like a you know like a piece of land right so they are going to get you know like killed while crossing you know like these uh, you know like a uh, roads and you know like a things right so it it brings actually it fragments the whole ecosystem into multiple you know like a smaller segments and eventually it kills them right so there are huge you know impacts of uh, you know like a road you know uh, infrastructure right so this is just to sensitize like how one can you know like avoid you know like a such bad impacts further coming down to carbon emission intensity of different economies okay so yeah you can see mongolia you know is one of the highest impacting one and one of the you know the highest i think top most impacting country on this planet you know with the huge pollution and all sorts of impact is the qatar okay is from uh, you know like a middle east you know like a regions okay and uh, is one of the highest uh, you know i think that that whole the place one okay 
on uh, uh, you know like a, a overall impact on the planet okay so this country must be actually negated to reduce its uh, you know like emissions to such an extent and bring to the you know, like controllable limits apart from that we are seeing uh, mongolia and you know north korea over here right and uh, yeah cambodia it looks like also is uh, like that in this southeast asian i think country and uh, south africa then further and then a few more you know from uh, you know central asian region right yeah number of air transport passengers carried by in the year 2019 so in this one you can see of course you know like a 400 to 800 million you know like a passengers you know perhaps us i know like a china and brazil you know they top the list i think perhaps us tops the list then we have uk russia australia india you know like uh, and a few more european countries and uh, majorly if you see these uh, african nations and a few from uh, you know eastern europe and this central asian you know like a uh, region there uh, may have been the lower numbers this is from this source maybe you can search for the latest data railway passengers carried in 2019 so in this one you can see clearly china and uh, india you know they come at the top you know and then there is japan russia and a few european countries then usa so as per the you know like analysis of environmental impact of these you know like different uh, uh, transportation sectors you know like uh, railways is considered to be one of the you know like a uh, uh, most optimized one most you know like a green one so because it doesn't uh, emits you know so much of uh, you know like exhaust you know as compared to the aviation industry and uh, any other you know like a personalized you know like a vehicle vehicles also so yeah this should be promoted as the transportation preferred transportation you know like a system finally further we have a mobile cellular subscription as per year 2019 you know number per 100 people so you can see 300 you know 50 you know is topped by you know south africa here i think russia also has highest concentration then you know like indonesia us and the south american countries you know these eastern you know european countries international telecommunication union you can check for the latest data then we have share of the population using internet okay so you can see these middle east countries they have highest you know like a concentration then most of european countries russia okay north america brazil india comes into the you know like a lower ranges you can see perhaps this is the percentage between 20 to 30 as per year 2019 you can check for the latest data then we have spending on research and development a share of gdp so as a share of gdp if you see you know this uh, nordic country you know here this israel and japan and south korea you know and even us you know they are spending you know the highest in terms of uh, share of gdp they are in the dark green you know like a shade then comes you know like a china australia new zealand mexico many of these european countries and uh, then in the lower ranges it is india is also there i think 0.5 to 1% you know that is the slab we are in this must actually increase because if we want a prosperous and strong india i think we, we must you know insist on robust r&d yeah so now i'll give you, you know some examples like how the impact of uh, you know like a uh, products and you know like a uh, services and you know other you know like a uh, things items can be minimized by efficient and uh, you know like sustainable design and planning exercises so this is uh, you know like a uh, one uh, commercial product i have taken a case study okay how oi contributes to the un sustainable development goals sdg 9 you know so oi and sustainable industry innovation and infrastructure so this is the you know like a uh, 
slide which talks about so these are the components you can uh, pause for a minute and uh, see the details like motor controller battery controller system controller iot control connectivity location accuracy motor battery lights turning indicators throttle and brakes so these are the components of uh, you know like uh, this uh, bike yeah so what they have done so far on innovation front we have championed major innovations that have made e-scooter sharing safer, greener and more efficient supported by our city innovation fund. On battery technology what they have done? Voi was the first operator to commit to swappable batteries in 2019 a leapfrog innovation that cut our emissions by 50% and made our operations safer for our employees. We are investing in best in class battery technology and analytics with partners like Nautical and extend the lifespan and ensure second life applications for our batteries. We share findings with partners and industry networks to accelerate the safe electrification of transport globally. Inclusive parking infrastructure innovation, why has worked closely with a number of disability advocacy groups across Europe such as the Royal National Institute of Blind People to develop safe parking infrastructure solutions that consider the need of vulnerable groups. Why has developed over 250 scooter parking racks made from recycled materials. We have pioneered a number of parking innovations to promote responsible parking such as our parking cop feature which analyzes parking photos at the end of each ride and has reduced non-compliant user parking by 37%. So a lot of improvement on you know, like these uh, terms so you can see in the numbers also. Advanced GPS what is interesting investing in state of the art geofencing technology that is revolutionizing the, GS, the GPS accuracy and safety of micro mobility. Safety research we is collaborating with the University of Mavic and the RNIV to develop a sound that can warn vulnerable people of approaching scooters. Well, their targets, clean batteries, of course, more improvement because still if you see renewable resources, the most, you know, like a bad, you know, like a disadvantage is these, uh, you know, energy storage systems, majorly like, you know, batteries. Because batteries still consume, uh, you know, like a, uh, a huge number of resources and, uh, you know, like a heavy metals and you know, other stuff. Okay, and other you know like a chemical compounds which are you know like a toxic and hazardous to the environment, human exposure, and any other you know like animal or plant exposure. Okay, some of those uh, chemicals are you know like a carcinogens also you know causing you know like severe you know like a problems in the human society. Okay, so clean batteries is the need of our if this gets you know like a done you know like a negativity around renewable resources, uh, renewable energy resources such as solar you know will be addressed efficiently. Cut battery production emissions by 30% by developing a battery pack within European producers by 2022. Circularity, increase second life applications so that you know these can be used again for all safe batteries. Safety and parking innovation, then we saw social infrastructure, yeah, environmental certifications. Then there is another uh, case study of this FlowTAC. Maybe you can search these case studies separately for your understanding. Flow tag, you know, so optimizing traffic flows for smoother journeys and cleaner cities. Okay, so you can see, you know, like uh, there is this indicator, you know. Uh, so uh, <coughs> here we will see what we have done so far with road traffic forecast to grow at alarming levels across the globe. Council planners and transport authorities must keep our towns and cities accessible and people moving without impacting the environment. The award winning traffic optimization solution flow tag. Launched in year 2017, does just that. FlowTech forecasts and optimizes traffic flows at the network level, providing gear control to keep cities moving and therefore supporting SDG level in enabling sustainable cities and communities. By implementing FlowTech in Denver, uh, Deventer, we have already seen a reduction in the number of vehicles having to stop at junctions across the city, which leads to CO2 emissions reduction between 7 to 18 percent and reduction in NOx emissions by between 11 to 26 percent. Those are the huge percentage you know like a saving right in uh, CO2 and uh, NOxes you know like a nitrogen based you know like oxides and different other you know like a, a compounds right. So well what it does it optimizes and you know like shares this you know information on the internet so that you know like a new oncoming drivers who are you know heading to you know like a, a particular street or a road you know can send them, save themselves of uh, you know like a congested uh, traffic right. So this optimization is I am sure like in contributing a lot 
more such innovations are needed you know at market level where you know like all of us can benefit yeah what have we done so far most cities across the world are introducing flow tag to create cleaner cities where it's more pleasant to live and work in the united kingdom feasibility studies are underway and the demonstrable impact on traffic flows has been recognized by two leading industry award schemes Flowtech was awarded the Technology Innovation Prize and the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport annual awards for excellence. Peter against stiff competition, judges agreed that Flowtech led to the field as a groundbreaking innovation with proven results. Flowtech also won the Road Visionary Award at New, City, New Civil Engineering uh, Magazine's Tech Faced Awards, which recognized organizations that pushed boundaries, developing pioneering uh, ideas to effect major changes in the global road sector. With this, we have come to the you know like a final slide where we will see you know some challenges and solutions from UN environment. More countries lack basic and resilient infrastructure. That's the true condition. Look around your villages and towns. You know, if not cities, you know, they lack you know majorly on the infrastructure part. Well, more investment in infrastructure in these areas. You know, fostering sustainable development and growth. Because anyways, things are happening. If things should happen in a responsible way. You know, they can be channelized to fall under sustainable development. Secondly, poor infrastructure is the major barrier for thriving businesses. Of course, poor infrastructure you know, doesn't allow businesses to grow. It doesn't give guarantee that, you know, like a supply of things will be ensured. You know, whether it is uh, energy or production materials or even like when you are sending your goods to the, you know, like other places, you know, how efficient uh, that system can be. Innovate to make green infrastructure, increase green efficiency and reduce the adverse environmental impact. So solving all of these but uh, you know using green aspects in mind you know, is an essential uh, factor over here. Lastly, infrastructure and industrialization often cause environmental degradation. Well, this is a very common you know like a prevalent uh, thing you know across the world. Whenever there is a infrastructure or industrialization growth, you know, it happens at the cost of, you know, like environment, you know. So that should not be the case. Uh, actually, if you see in this illustration, you know, these people are, uh, you know, like uh, are protesting against, you know, like uh, such heavy infrastructure, you know, like uh, facilities. Because it happens at the cost of, you can see here, you know, either felling trees or, you know, like uh, grabbing the land, okay or you know like uh, removing the you know like a habitat of other species right killing all other animals you know like uh, removing those animals you know from those habitats because there is a habitat you know like a loss so they have to vacate you know they have to you know like uh, run and not all of them will be able to find a new place you know a lot of them will end up you know like a dead right so that is the situation well what can be done build resilient infrastructure protecting livelihoods against environmental and natural disasters so, well, growth and development, you know, should go, but hand in hand with the greener, you know, like approaches, because only then, you know, like this can be, you know, like a taken care of, right? So that is the situation. With this, you know, we have come to this, uh, you know, the end of uh, you know, like SDG nine. We are discussing industry innovation infrastructure. Okay, you should refer, uh, you know, like a UN website for the, you know, latest reports and data sets. Okay, for your understanding, connect it with your locality, with the, uh, you know, observations, you know, from your place, it will be beneficial. So, thank you all for joining. Uh, see you in the next lecture.